Advanced selling strategies by Brian Tracy. Strategy, tactics, and mental preparedness separate superior salespeople from the average. And with technological advances, even in the competition, the selling edge is now more important than ever. Drawing on his own successful sales career and his extensive experience as a sales consultant and seminar leader, Brian Tracy has developed the most comprehensive and effective approach to selling ever created. Advanced Selling Strategies provides you with the techniques and tools used by top salespeople in every industry, methods that net immediate and spectacular results. The book explains how to develop the self-image to give you the edge in every sales situation. Concentrate on the customer's emotional factors to ensure better sales results. Identify your customer's most pressing concerns and position your product or service to fill those needs. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Advanced Selling Strategies. Main idea about this book. The sales profession is one of the most interesting and most dynamic and most rewarding business fields available. And to successfully build a career in this field, there's really only one concept to keep in mind. You don't have to be a pioneer. In other words, don't try to blaze your own trail. Instead, learn from the success of others. Study the sales techniques which have worked for other people in other settings and with other products and services. Evaluate what worked for them. Adapt these new principles to suit your own specific product or service and move ahead. The principles of success remain the same regardless of what you're selling. The principles of success remain the same regardless of what you're selling. All it takes is the ability to adapt and adopt the techniques of sales success to your own needs and requirements. Number one, the psychology of selling. 80% of your success in the field of selling will be determined by what you think about. Therefore, by learning to think the same way the most successful salespeople do, you can improve your performance dramatically and immediately. Supporting ideas. Every person has a self-concept, a mental set of beliefs about themselves and the world. A self-concept has three main parts. Number one is self-ideal the person they like to be if everything went right. Number two is self-image, the way people see themselves at the present time. And number three, self-esteem, the alignment between self-image and self-ideal. The key to sales success lies in doing everything you can to build your self-esteem. The higher your self-esteem, the more successful you'll be in a sales role. To build and enhance your self-esteem. Number one, always see yourself as self-employed. The president of your own professional sales company, which may presently be subcontracted out to someone else. That means accepting total responsibility for what you accomplish. Number two, see yourself as a consultant, a problem solver, rather than a vendor trading money for your product or service. Approach clients with that attitude. And number three, act like a doctor in the client's best interest. To do so, you must examine first, then diagnose, and finally prescribe what they need. Number four, think strategically. Set clear goals, develop blueprints and plans, act decisively, and don't be worried about short-term setbacks. Number five, be intensely results-orientated. Combine empathy and ambition together in balance as you focus on effective utilization of your time. And number six is be ambitious. Work towards becoming the best in your field. When excellence is your standard, you'll act differently, more purposefully, in fact. And number seven, apply golden rule, selling. Sell to other people the same way you'd like to be sold if you were in the same position. That way you'll always act with honesty and integrity in everything you do. Key thoughts. The quality of your thinking determines the quality of your life. The quality of your thinking determines the quality of your life. Brian Tracy. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you want by finding out what others have done before you to get the results you want to get. If you believe you can do a thing or believe you cannot, in either case, you are probably right. Henry Ford. Chapter 2, The Development of Personal Sales Power. The main idea. In selling, everything counts, but 80% of your success will be derived from the quality of your personality. Therefore, build your personality by, number one, taking full responsibility for your own life. Number two, interpreting everything that happens in a positive light. Number three, making a commitment to excellence in your field. And number four, being persistent. Five, having integrity, perfect honesty with yourself and others. And number six, being grateful to everything you have. And seven, setting clear and specific goals. 
In addition, you need to understand the mental laws of success and engage in regular daily mental exercise. Supporting ideas. The seven main mental laws that apply to sales are, number one, the law of cause and effect. There is always a direct link between what's done and what's achieved. Number two, the law of compensation. Remuneration is always linked to the level of contribution. Number three, the law of control. The greater amount of control you have over your own life, the happier you'll be. Number four, the law of belief. Whatever you believe with emotion becomes your own personal reality. And number five, the law of concentration. Anything you mentally dwell on will expand until it fills your thoughts. And number six, the law of attraction. You always attract the people and circumstances that align with your most dominant thoughts. And number seven, the law of correspondence. Your outer world will always mirror your inner world in every detail. To become mentally fit and build a powerful personality, regularly engage in these exercises on a daily basis. Number one, give yourself a pep talk. Talk to yourself positively and enthusiastically about your life, your opportunities, your challenges, and your responses. Number two is visualize positive results. Form a strong and vibrant mental image of all the great things that you're going to achieve in the immediate future. And number three, feed your mind positive and inspiring mental food. Take on board the best ideas regularly and consistently. And number four, associate with positive people. Ideally, a group of successful, performance-orientated reference group. Number five, have regular training and development sessions where you learn from the best people in your field or other fields through books, tapes, seminars, etc. And number six, protect your health. Eliminate fat from your diet, physically exercise, drink lots and loads of water, and get enough rest. Seven, increase your tempo, move faster, see more people, get more done. Key thoughts. Your imagination is your preview of life's coming attractions. Dennis Waitley. And chapter three, personal strategic planning. The main idea, a personal strategic plan articulates your vision of who you are and where you want to head in the months and years ahead. The components of a personal strategic plan match those a business would put together and include number one, value statements. Number two, personal vision statement. Three, mission statement. Four, situation analysis. And five, market analysis. Supporting ideas. The components of a personal strategic plan are number one, values statement. In short, your values are your core beliefs, the personality and character traits that lie at the heart of what you consider important in life. Any improvement in life revolves around your values, so the clearer you can be expressed, the better. Your value statement should identify five values that are important to you in order of priority. What do you stand for? Number two, personal vision statement. Vision builds on your values and expresses what your ideal life would be like if you took your values to their logical conclusion. Again, clarity is the key. Clarity is the key. The clearer the vision you express, the more your quality of life will be enhanced. What would you dare to dream if you could not fail? And number three is mission statement. A personal vision statement is a definition of the kind of person you want to become in the future. A business mission statement clarifies how you want the customers to remember your business. What will you be remembered for? And number four, situation analysis. This clarifies, number one, where you are at present. Number two, how you got to where you are. Number three, where you want to be in the future. And four, how to get to where you want to be in the future. What has to be done differently to get somewhere better? Number five, market analysis. Your market analysis should detail which strategic opportunities are emerging in the marketplace and how you plan to exploit them in the near and long term. It should also help focus efforts and identify prospects that are likely to be responsive to whatever product or service you offer. How can you increase your results or resources invested? Many strategic plans use the GOSPA formula. G is for goals, specific, measurable, and time-orientated. O are for objectives, interim targets leading to goals. S for strategy, how you will accomplish your objectives. P for plans, daily, weekly, and monthly precise targets. And A for activity, maximizing your productive time. Key thoughts, personal strategic planning is perhaps the most important single skill you could ever develop in ensuring that you achieve the success of which you are capable. Brian Tracy. And number four, customer relationships, the heart of the sale. The main idea, 
The very essence of sales success is to build and maintain high quality relationships with customers. The only way to do that is with trust and credibility. Supporting ideas. Selling professionally is quite simple. It's the process of persuading someone the value they will receive from your product or service is greater than its cost. Your job is to show that is the best possible use of a person's money. The critical factor in sales success is risk. Everything a sales professional does should be aimed squarely and directly at reducing the risk from the customer's perspective. To reduce risk, number one, be a great listener with sincerity and empathy. Number two, be worthy of being trusted, which simply means keeping confidential information confidential. And number three, build a long-term relationship so customers understand you have their best interest at heart and not your own. Number four, become friends with your customers by always uneerily acting in the customer's best interest. Number five, never criticize anyone, even your direct competitors. And number six, accept your customers for who they are, being non-judgmental. Number seven, take every possible opportunity to express your approval of your customer. Give them praise. Number eight, show your appreciation through small actions, politeness and larger deeds. Thank you notes. And number nine, find something to genuinely admire about your customer's life or their achievements and express those feelings. Number 10, never argue, always be agreeable. And number 11 is focus, don't get distracted. The sales process has changed dramatically since the 1970s. Prior to that time, the generally used sales model was 10% establishing good rapport, 20% qualifying the prospect, 30% making a sales presentation, and 40% closing the sale. Today's prevailing sales model, however, has reversed the way time is spent. The new sales model is 40% building trust, 30% identifying specific needs, 20% presenting solutions to needs, and 10% confirming and closing. Chapter five, the profession of selling. Main idea, to build a good, solid career in sales successfully, follow one simple guideline. Always do more than you're paid for. If you habitually put more into your career than you take out, you'll be exceptionally successful. Supporting ideas. The professional sales process is prospect, build trust, identify needs, present solutions, confirm and close customer. For this process to operate smoothly, seven vital factors are required on the sales professional's part. Number one, a positive mental attitude. Number two, good health and appearance. Three, complete and detailed product knowledge. Number four, ongoing prospecting and development of new business. Number five, effective presentation skills. Six, the ability to handle objections and gain commitment. And seven, personal planning and time management skills. Incremental improvements in any of these areas can produce substantially greater overall results. The goal should be to continuously improve in each of these areas. In the professional sales process, there are nine critical factors around which success is built. These factors should be evaluated on a regular, ongoing basis, again with the aim of steadily improving performance in each. The critical factors and professional level criteria for each are critical factor versus criteria. Number one is prospecting, contacting sufficient high quality people to meet targets. Number two, getting appointments having enough appointments to fill your time productively. Number three is qualifying, spending time only with the people who have the ability to buy. And number four, identifying problems, asking perceptive questions using active and empathetic listening. Number five, making presentations, providing convincing evidence of product or service benefits. Number six is answering objections, anticipating concerns and able to provide satisfactory answers. Seven is closing, asking for a commitment to action competently and comfortably. And number eight is follow through, making certain everything that has been promised is delivered. And number nine is referrals, having happy and satisfied customers get their friends involved. Sales professionals are constantly trying new approaches and new ideas in an effort to improve their performance in each of these nine critical areas. By attempting to improve regularly and continuously, they keep their business program fresh and vital. Key thoughts. The best companies are not hundreds of percent better in any area. They are just 1% better in hundreds of areas. Tom Peters. Courage is rightly considered the foremost of all virtues for opponent 
all others to pend. Winston Churchill. Courage is not absence of fear or lack of fear. It is control of fear, mastery of fear. Mark Twain. Stand back and look at your sales performance and every detail of what you do. Resolve this very day to begin improving in each of your critical success areas. Upgrade each of your vital functions, set benchmarks or standards for yourself, and measure yourself against those standards every day and every week. Perhaps the most wonderful part of your career in professional selling is that there is no limit on how good you can get at it except for the limits you impose on yourself. Brian Tracy Selling is an honorable profession. Salespeople are the forerunners of progress, development, and growth throughout the entire economy. It is the salespeople who ultimately generate the markets for almost all other skills. Every economic indicator or report in the newspapers and business magazines deals in some way with the level of sales in a particular company or industry. Brian Tracy. Top salespeople are the spark plugs in the engines of social and economic progress. Brian Tracy. It is your attitude and your activities that determine whether you make selling an occupation or a profession. What makes the future of professional selling so bright is the fact that you are in the business of developing professional selling friendships. Some of the best people you will ever meet will start off as tough prospects that will eventually convert into customers. The greatest joy that you'll ever receive from your profession is the deep inner satisfaction that will come from knowing that through your products and services, you are making a real difference. Brian Tracy. In my conversations with hundreds of top salespeople over the years, I have found that they all have one thing in common. They all have clear, written goals. They have taken their time to sit down and create a blueprint for themselves and their future lives. Every one of them has been amazed at the incredible power of goal setting and strategic planning. Every one of them has accomplished far more than they ever believed possible in selling. Brian Tracy. And chapter six is motivating people to buy from you. The main idea, sales professionals are intensely interested in their reasons people decide to buy for them. They meticulously analyze why current customers have purchased from them, since this is the key to expanding their sales effectiveness. Supporting ideas, everyone has a primary and secondary reasons for what they do. Number one, the primary motivators are the utility requirements, i.e. you buy a car because you need transport. Number two, the secondary motivators are the specific reasons your product or service was selected from all available choices. E-I-G, you buy a sports car because it's fun to drive. Quite frequently, there will be two reasons for making any purchase decision. Number one, the logical reason that sounds good to other people. And number two, the real reason, which is emotional and often irrational. Therefore, professional sales business builders become adept at uncovering the real buying motives so as to focus on building this side of the business even more intensely. To probe for this kind of information, sales professionals ask open-ended questions such as, we very much appreciate your business, particularly since we realize you have so many choices in today's market. We're doing a little market research to find out how we can serve you better. We're interested in the real reason you liked our product or service enough to buy it. What would you consider to be the real reason? From there, you can branch off a number of other questions. For example, every product has its strengths and weaknesses. We're interested in your opinion from your perspective. What do you feel are the strengths and weaknesses of the product or service we offer? Sales professionals are intensely interested in gathering and analyzing information about why people buy their product or service. In effect, studying present clients and customers unlocks the key to serving even more clients and customers in a similar fashion in the future. In addition, people who have not bought from you can also provide a wealth of information. If they can be contacted and their input factored in as well, a clear view of their motivating and demotivating factors in the overall purchase process will come into focus. Sales professionals work from the perspective that everyone they come into contact with is a potential client or customer, if they can just figure out the way to address their primary buying need. Key thoughts. If you can develop your creativity sufficiently to discover the real reason why someone will buy your product or service, there is nothing that can stop you from moving into the top ranks of the sales professionals in your field. Brian Tracy. People buy the consequences they expect from owning and using your product or service. In the customer's mind, your product or service is a means to an end. 
it is only the ends sought after that has the power to elicit a buying decision. Chapter 7. How to influence the buying decision. Main idea. Most sales are made or lost within the first 30 seconds of contact. Therefore, sales professionals control and orchestrate every element of their environment with the singular goal of making people feel comfortable, dealing with them, and confident about their experience. Supporting ideas. The key elements of the selling environment are, number one, the way you dress. 95% of the first impressions you will make will be dictated by your clothing. You simply cannot dress casually. You have to dress to look the part of a top flight sales professional. Ideally, when people look at you, they should know immediately they are dealing with a top performer. You should dress the same way their other professional advisors, bankers, lawyers, accountants, etc. dress in their daily business activities. Number two, the accessories you use. Every single element in your wardrobe should send a signal of quality and soundness. This should extend to the very small and seemingly insignificant items like ties, watches, rings, pens for men, and earrings, necklaces, brochures, belts, and scarves for women. Even the color of your shoes and the socks or stockings worn can influence the impression of excellence you want to send. Number three is your grooming. Hair lengths and styles send a particularly strong signal for both men and women. Hair should be as well styled, well maintained, and very conservative. For men, beards and mustaches distract and should be avoided. For women, the emphasis should be on the face, not an elaborate hairstyle. And for both, you need to be fresh smelling in your prospect is to be influenced to buy from you. Number four is your posture. By standing and sitting straight, you send the signal. The matter under discussion is important and not to be treated casually. Every element of your posture should project enthusiasm and professionalism rather than casualnessness. Your body language should mirror that of your customer so as to enhance the rapport between you and them. And number five is your office. The furnishings, decor, and even wall colorings of your office should be thoroughly decided. You want people to realize you are successful and businesslike. How your office is furnished speaks volumes on your behalf. Number six is your vocabulary. Many salespeople are surprised to learn there exists a direct correlation between the quality and variety of your everyday vocabulary and the amount of money you ultimately earn. In short, to make more, increase your vocabulary and enhance it with the knowledge of a better grammar and dictation. The results will surprise. Key thoughts. All top salespeople consciously and deliberately orchestrate every single element of their environment. This attention to detail is the mark of a true professional. Brian Tracy. And chapter eight, prospecting. Fill in the sales pipeline. Main idea. To build a successful business, you must have an ongoing new business development program underway. In the sales field, that means prospecting, finding the requisite number of new people each week who are capable of buying your product or service. Supporting ideas. Before worrying about your prospecting, take a few minutes to develop a list of the attributes of an excellent prospect. They will most likely be people who are, number one, have a pressing need for your product or service. Number two, they can appreciate the cost-benefit relationship involved. Number three, have a history of positive experience with your industry. Number four, unable enough to buy enough of your products to make it worthwhile. Number five, can act as a future site of your reference for you. And six, are capable and willing to pay for what they buy promptly. And seven, are reasonably close to your office or business. Therefore, the best use of of your prospecting time should be focused on identifying and contacting people who are excellent rather than average prospects. The more time you can spend with better prospects, the greater your results will be. Your existing customer base should provide numerous clues about what type of prospect most likely to be responsive to your product or service offering. Your goal should be to find more of the same. Therefore, study your customer base closely. Find out what they have in common and then start thinking about how you can more effectively contact more people in similar situations or circumstances. The main sources of prospects for new business are, number one, newspapers, particularly local newspapers. You can contact the people that advertise, the people who are described and the business that are expanding. Number two, the yellow pages, for companies which are in similar categories as your present customers. Number three, business publications for companies and people that are in changing circumstances. Number four, trade magazines, for specific industries which have proven to be open to product features you offer. 
Number five, Dunn and Bradsheet, and the other credit rating agencies who rank industries and companies. Number six, Chambers of Commerce, who provide regular networking and speaking opportunities. Number seven, referrals from existing customers, piggybacking on their credibility and friendships. And number eight is cold calling, ideal for starting a new career or for refreshing a jaded career. And number nine, telephone prospecting, to set up future face-to-face meetings. And number 10, public speaking, finding a cluster of people who are able to buy and speaking opportunities to talk to them. Prospecting varies quite marketably according to whether you sell a large ticket or small ticket item. For small products and services, activity and exposure are critical factors. Conservatively, for large items, planning and strategy come to the fore, and every interaction needs to be carefully and meticulously scripted in advance. Many salespeople are afraid of prospecting. In fact, the fear of prospecting is more likely to be the reason sales professions fail to realize their true potential than any other reason. To overcome fear, be prepared to answer the most common questions. Number one, why should I listen to you? Number two, what is it? And number three, how much does it cost? Acknowledge that rejection is never personal and cannot be avoided. It's an integral part of the sales process. Keep track of your ratios. Before too long, you'll become keenly aware each rejection takes you one step closer to your next success. Therefore, the more you were rejected, the closer you're getting to your next success. Understand that the more you offer is rejected, the more you're learning about how to succeed in the future. Provide yourself with a tangible reward whenever you meet your prospecting targets. Build your own positive feelings about the entire process rather than treating it with fear and misgiving. Get involved in public speaking forum like Toastmasters. Good public speaking skills have a positive spin-off effect on prospecting. Always make certain you're running on time. Having a few minutes to collect your thoughts significantly enhances your ability to prospect effectively. Visualize yourself succeeding and performing flawlessly when talking to prospective customers. Get the feeling of excitement and pleasure that comes from pulling off something direct on a regular basis. Key thoughts. The starting point of successful selling is successful prospecting. If you can't find someone to talk to who can and will buy your product or service and pay for it within a reasonable period of time, you'll never get a chance to show your personality or to use your other talents and abilities. You can be excellent at every part of the professional sales process, but unless you can find someone to talk to, your skills won't help you. Your ability to find new customers determines your level of success, your rankings among your peers, your position in your industry, and your standard of living. You owe it to yourself, therefore, to become absolutely excellent at prospecting. You can observe a lot just by looking. We don't mind if people make mistakes at IBM. There's nothing wrong with that. But to make the same mistake over and over again without finding out why is unforgivable. Thomas Watson Jr. You are in the business of new business development. Chapter 9, How to Make Powerful Presentations. Main idea. Effective presentations are the centerpiece of the professional sales process. The ability to give influential and persuasive presentations to prospects can offset average performance levels in every other part of the overall sales process. Supporting ideas. A professional sales presentation is structured around three basic parts. Number one, establish rapport to get attention. Number two, identify the problem as it relates to them. Number three, present the solution, which is cost-effective and specific. Uses open-ended questions as an integral part of the presentation. The most effective questions, number one, identify and articulate specific needs. Number two, demand attention by highlighting problems you can solve. Number three, illustrate how your product or service provides solutions. And number four, can be used to gain a commitment to action. Three centers around the unspoken thoughts every prospect has in their back of their mind throughout. Number one, why should I listen to you? Number two, what is it? Number three, what's in it for me? And number four, so what? And number five, how do I get it? It Takes into account the personality type of the prospect and user's preferred buying strategy that is most applicable. The four personality types of their buying strategies are, number one, the relator sensitive to the effect a purchase decision will have on others. These people need time to make a decision and reassurance others will approve. Number two, the socializer, 
who is achievement orientated with all the trappings of power and influence. These people need acknowledgement and specifics about how your product will help them achieve greater success. And number three, the analyzer, who is concerned with doing the right thing. With these people, you must be specific, highly detailed, thoroughly and prepared to work methodically and steadily through a checklist. And number four is the director, who focuses impatiently on the bottom line results. To sell to this type of person, focus exclusively on ways your product helps him do his job better and perform at higher level. And do it quickly before they lose interest. And number five, use testimonials effectively to create credibility and trust in what you can deliver. Testimonials come in three flavors. Number one, letters from satisfied customers. Number two, list of current clients. Three, photos of people using your product or service. Six, frequently invites the prospects to express, number one, what they are thinking, two, how they feel, and three, their opinions. Number seven is an accurate reflection of the salesperson's own personality. When personality is injected into the sales presentation, people stop focusing on the product or service and instead begin responding to the personality elements. Number eight has a pace and flow which matches the preference of the purchaser. And number nine generally deals with price last, so as to provide the information by which value can be determined before price is discussed. Number 10, aligned with the buying process of all customers and clients that must go through. The buying process has three stages. Stage one, when the prospect realizes the need exists. Number two, when the prospect evaluates solution options. And three, when a definitive decision is made. Number 11, satisfies the law of four, which states for every decision, there will usually be one major item and three minor items to be resolved. Nobody ever makes a decision to buy until all four items have been considered. Number 12, use hot buttons, emotional triggers about very specific elements of your product or service solution to increase enthusiasm for the purchase decision. Number 13, demonstrates your ability to use specialist knowledge on behalf of your client or customer by illustrating, number one, that you have thorough product knowledge. Two, that you have an in-depth appreciation of their needs. Number three, that you have prepared carefully to serve them. Number four, that your timing is appropriate. And number five, that your personality matches your product or service. And six, that you have practiced and rehearsed beforehand. Number seven, that you practice whatever you preach. 14 is built around the ideal of one, showing a feature in action, two, telling what that means in terms of benefits, and three, asking questions about the significance of that feature. Number 15 moves from general concepts to specifics steadily and logically. Number 16 maintains momentum towards a sales decision by the use of the TDPPR formula. All future steps should always specify T, a time the next meeting will take place. D, a specific date. P, the place for the next meeting. P, the people who will be involved. And R, the reason or rationale for the next meeting. Key thoughts. Most sales in America start off this way. The positive, prepared salesperson meets the negative, uninterested prospect. But the professional salesperson is prepared for this. He is ready to take the prospect one step at a time through the process from skepticism about the product to complete conviction that this is exactly what he needs. Establishing a friendly relationship, asking questions to uncover real needs, and then giving a thoroughly planned professional sales presentation is the key to turning the prospect around from a doubter to a customer. This is the business you are in. You talk to people who have no interest in what you are selling. They have no concept at all of how they could be better off by accepting your recommendations. Your job is to convert them from suspicious person to a committed customer. Your job is to use personality and persuasion skills to build high quality customer relationships that result in immediate sales and continue with the sales and referrals into the future. That is what you are paid for and there is no limit to how good you can become if you work at it. Chapter 10 is closing the sale, the end game of selling. Main idea, fortunately closing a sale is difficult. That creates the opportunity for you to prosper and earn tremendous wealth. If closing the sale was easy, all they'd need and pay for is an order taker and anyone on minimum wage can do that. 
supporting ideas. It's in handling objections and closing the sale that the sales prefer. Number one, the prospect is afraid of making a wrong decision. Number two, the salesperson is afraid of being rejected. Three, the customers are busy and frequently preoccupied. Number four, inertia has to be overcome before action is taken. Objections serve a key role in the sales process. Number one, they're good because they indicate interest. Number two, they show where prospects are unclear about benefits. Number three, they indicate that people are seriously considering the offer. The best ways to handle objections, number one, differentiate between a condition, a genuine reason for not buying that cannot be answered, and an objection, which can be answered with additional information. Number two, the best way to handle an objection is to answer it before it comes up. Develop good, solid answers to the six most common objections that come up in your presentation. Anticipate and have little room for doubt to creep in at later stages. Number three, treat objections simply as requests for more detail. Compliment the prospect for raising that matter. Reinstate it back to them to make certain you have grasped their true meaning and intelligently and thoroughly discuss the matter in greater detail. Number four, never take an objection personally. Some people have a lifetime of conditioning against salespeople. Show you're acting in their best interest to offset that. Ideally, you want to get the prospect to specify one condition on which closing the sale will hinge. Once they do that, then you effectively have a closing condition, the hurdle you must cross to complete the sale. Frequently, price will be the main objection. To show that your product is fairly priced in the competitive market, number one, find an appropriate way to demonstrate the value which will be delivered by your product or service. The greater the dramatization of this demonstration, the better. Number two, ask by how much your price is too much. Then focus on showing why that differential is worth paying to greater benefits. Number three, tell a success story about a person in a similar situation and what they found. Number four, remind the prospect that ultimately you always get what you pay for in life. Ask them if ever in their experience they purchased something cheap that turned out to be above expectations. And number five, show them the specific and concrete ways the value derived will more then offset the purchase cost itself. The key errors to avoid when closing a sale are number one, arguing with the prospect. Number two, expressing your own personal opinions. Number three, knocking your competition. Number four is overselling, promising benefits that will not be realized. And number five, making promises you're unable to ultimately deliver on. The key closing techniques are number one, the invitational close, simply and clearly inviting the prospect to take advantage of the benefits of your product or service offers. Number two, the plan of action close, where the next steps are specified and the focus changes from yes, no decision to enjoyment of the product benefits. Number three, the preference close, where instead of asking for a yes or no decision, you keep on presenting the choices with regards to payment and delivery until everything is finalized. And number four, the alternative close, where your customer is asked to make a decision they only need to make if they go ahead with the purchase transaction. By making a small decision, they've already agreed to a large decision as well. Number five, the authorization close, asking them to sign off on the order by giving their authorization on the order form. And number six, the order sheet close, where you ask questions and start writing the answers on the order sheet. Number seven, the think it over close, where you ask him what it would take to satisfy him to be able to go ahead and make a decision today. Once that condition has been expressed, then you would have something tangible to deal with rather than vagueness and an arbitrary ending. Key thoughts. The world belongs to the askers. The world belongs to the askers. Because of their fear of failure and rejection, most people are reluctant to ask for the thing that they want and need. They suggest, imply, and hint but they are reluctant to ask and be told no. Much of your success and happiness in life will be determined by your ability and willingness to ask for the things you want. Brian Tracy Once you have decided what you want, act as if it was impossible to fail, and it shall be. There are no limitations upon what you can accomplish in the profession of selling except the limitations you place on yourself by your own doubts and fears. When you practice acting boldly and behaving as if it were impossible to fail, you will soon make the quality of courage a fundamental part of your character where it will serve you all the days of your life. Your success in selling will then be guaranteed. There's never been a time or place in all history where an excellent salesperson could live a final life 
then he or she can right now, right here in our economic system. And that's a wrap on advanced selling strategies. Subscribe to the channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you like reading and want to get involved in sharing knowledge and spreading great book summaries, connect with myself by emailing info at bestbookbits.com to join us. Thanks for watching and listening and go out there and sell. Have a great day.